Hey everyone, this is Brecht Billet from Simplified Courses and this is my first YouTube video. Today I'm going to talk about my Angular Change Detection Quiz. It's a free quiz that you can consume through my website. The reason why I wanted to make a video about this is because the results were not that good. We will go through all the different questions and answers and I will explain how it works. But first, before you continue with that video, I would advise you to try to do the quiz. Check your knowledge. Just try it out. You have nothing to lose, right? And afterwards, you can resume this video and we will continue and go through the results. This is the quiz. The only thing that we have to do is to go to simplify.courses slash angular dash change dash detection dash quiz. Fill in the form, you will get an email and you will be able to take the quiz just like that. Another thing that you might want to take a look at is the free Angular change detection cheat sheet. You could hang it in your office or you could just use it to comprehend change detection better when you're debugging bugs. So I've created that specifically just for you. The only thing you need to do is fill in the form and you will get access to that free piece of content. You could even use it to take the quiz afterwards if you like. It will definitely make it easier. First question, how does Angular know when to trigger change detection? Either it is baked into the system, just like AngularJS, all the APIs trigger change detection manually behind the scenes. For instance, Activated Route Navigate triggers change detection without the need of an external library. The event emitters of our outputs trigger change detection directly. The third one, it uses a library to monkey patch all the native browser events that the framework can hook into. The answer is the third one. It uses a library to monkey patch all the native browser events that the framework can hook into. Angular we use zone.js which will create an ng zone with an inner zone and an outer zone. The inner zone is being used to run Angular into and that will trigger change detection when something happens. There we go. Second question. What is true about zone.js? It's a library that Angular uses for browser compatibility ZoneJS enforces performance when it comes to reactive programming. It's a mechanism for intercepting and keeping track of asynchronous work. It monkey patches all the browser's async APIs. The answer is, it's a mechanism for intercepting and keeping track of asynchronous work, because that's what a zone is. A zone is an asynchronous execution context. That one will be true. It monkey patches all the browser async APIs. That is also true. That's how Angular knows when it should trigger change detection. Question three. How many zones does ng-zone have? One zone, it's called ng-zone. Two zones, an inner one and an outer one. And Angular gives us one zone for every change detection cycle. One zone is not true. There are two zones, the inner zone and the outer zone. The inner zone is where the magic happens, where change detection is being triggered, and the outer zone is what we use if we want to run asynchronous code and don't trigger change detection. For instance, when we're doing a drag and drop, we don't want to trigger change detection every time the user is moving his mouse. So in that case, we would run it outside of Angular. Question four. <clears throat> How many active zones can Angular have at the same time? One, zone.current. Two, the outer and the inner zone can be active at the same time. A zone is never really active. As much as we want, we have to define it in the change detector ref. The answer is one. There can only be one zone active at the same time. It's true that we have an outer zone and an inner zone, but there can only be one active at the same time. And we can see that by using zone.current. What is true about the inner and the outer zone? Code run in the inner zone will trigger change detection when an event happens. Code run in the outer zone will run outside of Angular and not trigger change detection when an event happens. They will both trigger change detection, but the outer zone will perform change detection it's synchronous when an event happens. The first one is true. Code run in the inner zone will trigger change detection when an event happens. That's why you have the inner zone, also called the Angular zone. Code run in the outer zone, which is also called the parent zone, will run outside of Angular and not trigger change detection when an event happens. 
That is true, that is exactly why the outer zone is available. Question 6. The tick function will trigger change detection in Angular. Indeed, because that's an asynchronous event that will be caught by zone.js when a set interval statement is being executed. That would also be an asynchronous event. When an output is being event bound. That's an interesting one. This means that if we have an output and we, we use it inside of our class, that means that we have a subscription to the observable that is attached to that output. And that means an event listener or some asynchronous code is being executed, resulting in zone.js to trigger. Every 20 milliseconds, that's just stupid, right? Question 7. With change detection strategy default, which views will be detected for changes when change detection is called on the top view? We are referring to the tick function here. Only on the top view, the top view and as direct children, or all the views in the page. Change detection is run for all the views on every event. Unfortunately, that is correct. When we have the default strategy, all the views in the page are being detected for changes. Not just the top view or the top view and its direct children, but all the views in the page. Question 8. With change detection strategy on push, when will the ng do check lifecycle hook be called? That's something a lot of people don't know. For all the components that are change detected, which is what most people think, for the component that are change detected and their direct children, and when the component is initialized. It's answer number two. If change detection get triggered for a certain view, its direct children will also run ng do check. That does not mean change detection is being triggered for those children. That means only the ng do check function is being called. What is true about the expression changed after it has been checked error? It can only happen in production mode. That is not true. It can only happen in development mode because it's a check for developers to see if they haven't done anything wrong, if they still follow unidirectional data flow. Um, so it does not happen in both production and development mode. In development, change detection is run twice. This can result in this error. Indeed, change detection will run twice in development because it will compare the two values of the change detection and see if it differs. If that differs, it means that some kind of side effect has happened. It happens when you are not correctly implementing the ng on init lifecycle hook. That is not true. It's only triggered when the template has async pipes. That is also not true. With change detection on push, what happens when we call change detector ref mark for check in a component? It marks the view of the component dirty. It triggers change detection on the view and its direct parent. Nope. It does not trigger change detection, it marks things for check. So, it triggers change detection on the view of its children, that is also not true. It marks the view of the component and all its parent views until the top dirty. That's exactly what's going on, because that way the change detector knows in the next cycle which component need to be updated. It marks the view of the component and all its parents dirty and triggers change detection on the entire application. That is not true. Change detection is not being triggered. It will only mark it for check. Question 11. With change detection on push, what happens when an input is being set with a new value? It marks the view of the component dirty. It marks the view of the component and all its parents dirty. It doesn't mark anything dirty. It calls change detection behind the scenes. Well, setting an input should never trigger change detection, right? And should it mark the component for check and all its parents? That would be weird because that means in the next change detection cycle, the parents would get updated and that's not what we want because we want it to happen in this change detection cycle. So it will only mark the view of this component dirty. When change detection on push, which statements are true when we bind an output to an event? Using a child component that output with the foo foo syntax. This basically means having a function foo in our class which will use the output foo which will basically subscribe to the observable that is attached to the output. Normally it's an event emitter but it can be another observable as well. It will trigger change detection. Yes it will. And why will it trigger change detection? It will trigger change detection because there will be a subscription 
which will result in an add event listener somehow, which will result in zone.js to trigger change detection. It will mark the component view and all its parent views dirty. Yes, that is true. Behind the scenes, having an output wraps the event listener in a function that will also mark this component and all the parents as dirty. It will mark the component view dirty, but not the parent views. That is not correct. Nothing. We have to take care of change detection ourselves. That's also not correct. It will mark the component view dirty and all its children views. Nope. Mark for check goes up, not down. Question 13. What does change detector ref detect changes do when called on a component? It triggers change detection on the entire application. That is not true. With change detection strategy default, it triggers change detection on the view of the component where it's called and triggers change detection on all its children and their children. That is true because that means that when we trigger change detection somewhere, it will just go down. That's only the case if we're in default. If we're using the on push, it will check whether it's dirty or not. So, while well, change detection on push, it triggers change detection on the view of the component where it's called and triggers change detection on all the children and their children unless they are not marked as dirty. That is also true. If they're marked as dirty, they will get detected for changes. If they're not dirty, they will get ignored because that's what on push does. Which is true about the async pipe. It will trigger change detection every time a new event occurs in the observable. Well, change detection will be triggered, but not by the async pipe, right? Does not have anything to do with that. It will mark the view of the component where it's used and all its parents dirty. Every time a new event occurs on the observable it has subscribed to. That is true. When we have a new event, it will mark itself dirty and all its parents, so it knows what to update. It will only subscribe and unsubscribe automatically, no change detection logic nor dirty marking logic here. That is not the case. It will subscribe for us, it will unsubscribe for us all automatically, but it will also do a mark for check. It will mark the view of the component where it's used dirty but not the parents every time a new event occurs in the observable. That's not true, it will also mark the parents. And then our last question. What happens when we run code in the following block? So I'm referring to the run outside Angular function, which is a function that lives on ng zone. What we see here is we do a set timeout and we're really wondering like, what does that do? Does that trigger change detection? Yes or no? <coughs> It will trigger change detection after one second, but it's synchronous. That is not true. It will not trigger change detection on this component after one second. That is true. It will trigger change detection in a different zone after one second. It will run the code in a different zone, but it will not trigger change detection. Now, that might be a little bit of a trick question of mine. It will trigger change detection on the entire application after one second. That is also not true. So. We have a hundred percent on my own quiz. Isn't that something? No. So the results were below 50%. So I really hope that this helped you a bit. If you're interested in really learning how Angular ticks, I have reverse engineered the Angular code base and I've written a small 52 page book about it. The book has references to the Angular code base everywhere. So you can just follow along what actually happens. Like for instance in here I'm talking about the tick function. When we click here you will see that it will take us to the actual tick function of Angular. The book is filled with that. The book is also filled with best practices. It's also filled with nice examples and it really helps you understand how change detection really works. If you want to support me or you really want to know how Angular ticks I have a limited offer for you. It's a 50% discount on this book. You can get it through the link below. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.